I got into a conversation the other day uh, asking why it is, um, or not asking why it is, but uh, asking me uh, to uh, spend more time on my podcast uh, denouncing um, hate that seems to be coming from the left. Um, I, I and, you know, and rather than reporting on the PR stuff, and I made the comment that um, I don't have to choose between doing either because we do both on the show. Um, we have talked about hate coming from the right. We've talked about hate coming from the left. Um, you know, there's fewer incidents of one than the other, but we do talk about it. Uh, and um, I understand, right, when we have stuff that's going on uh, thousands of miles away and uh, passions are inflamed here and then we act on it. Um, that if we talk about one side one day, it could make people think who don't follow the show like this, that we only talk about that side or we don't. But we do talk about both. And um, we have a story here that's concerning to us because according to the B'nai B'rith, they uh, released a report on May 6th and says that the number of anti-Semitic incidents reached a record high in 2023 in Canada. Quote, in its latest annual audit, B'nai B'rith Canada reports the number of anti-Semitic incidents in the country more than doubled from 2022 to 2023 and has now reached a record high. Quote, if a physical barometer did in fact exist, the reading for 2023 would be off the chart, Richard Robertson, the group's director of policy and research, said in Ottawa on Monday, which was also, which was also Holocaust, Rem Holocaust Remembrance Day, or Yom HaShoah. So that was on, on, on the 6th. Uh, this week. B'nai B'rith, a Jewish advocacy organization, said that between January 1st, 2023 and December 31st, 2023, it logged 5,791 incidents of anti-Semitism surpassing the previous record of 2,799 reported in 2021. Let me repeat that. Logged 5,791 incidents surpassing the previous record of 2,799. It's more than doubled. Mm. Robert said, said he's particularly troubled by the 208% increase in the number of violent incidents, with 77 such incidents recorded last year compared with 25 in 2022. Quote, the systemic nature of anti-Semitism has forced Canadian Jews to question the continued vitality of the nation's Jewish communities, he said. Robertson said that the recent conflicts in Israel, first in May and June, then beginning on October 7th of last year, quote, make it abundantly clear when there's unrest in Israel, Jewish Canadians suffer unduly. About 1,200 people were killed in the Hamas-led attacks on southern Israel on October 7th, and about 250 people were taken hostage. According to Israeli figures, more than 34,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been killed during Israel's military response since then, health officials in the territory say. Um, B'nai B'rith is also saying uh, that it recorded a rise in anti-Semitic incidents coming from across Canadian society and from across a wide variety of actors, including figures on the far right and far left, and those acting at the behest of foreign actors. The incidents, the group says it recorded, include the firebombing of a synagogue and Jewish community center in Montreal. And we will mm. note that the leader of the official opposition voted against funding for a Jewish community center in Vancouver. Uh, the incidents also... While he was in Montreal at the time, right? Yes, at a, we don't know if, if he was at the Hanukkah event at when the he time. He cast the, the vote specifically, but it was the same day and same time, and he was not in the House of Commons to do it because he was going there. Right. And of course, he was using that event as cover for a, so that people wouldn't say he wasn't in the House only to attend a fundraiser. So he basically exploited the Jewish community and their observance on that day. And so, but he likes to pretend that uh, no other leader is more pro-Israel than him, which, which again is a lie. Um, yes, it is a lie. The incidents also uh, recorded eggs being thrown at a Holocaust memorial monument in Canada. We'll also remind you that uh, the leader of the opposition voted against funding for a Holocaust museum. Yes, he did. A Jewish student being assaulted in an, in an anti-Semitic attack in BC's Lower Mainland and a rise in anti-Semitic graffiti, graffiti in public places involving, mes involving messages such as kill the Jews. Do not do that. Do not do it. Do not spray paint it. Do not say it. Do not think it. You're, of course, allowed to think what you want, but it would probably be best if you didn't think those things. Mm -hmm. 
don't have that in your heart or your soul. And remember, it is not the people of Israel you need to protest. It's the government of Israel. Because most of the people of Israel want nothing to do with Netanyahu or his policies. And it's certainly not Jewish Canadians that you should be protesting. No. Specifically, they don't have the That's, power to do anything. And this is the thing. It's like, I, look, I get the protest. I get it. I, I understand it. But you're, you're screaming into the void. What can we do? What can Canada do to stop the war? There's really only one person now, who can do anything about it. Th- th- and they will say stuff like, for example, you could send messages by divesting. You could not sell offensive military weapons. You could not sell defensive military weapons. Mm-hmm. You could... Uh, sure. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Agreed and then what? They'll just find another supplier. Well, find another supplier or you get your outcome. Mm-hmm. That Israel cannot no longer defend itself. And then what happens? Because from what I hear, and this is not my field of expertise, but uh, from what I hear, it's not like if, if Israel stopped, it's not like the other side would abandon its desire to eliminate. Yeah. Right. You can't tell an entire people, you know, what you're doing is wrong, so leave yourself defenseless either. Right. There are huge protests going on in Israel right right now. Yes. 53% of the Israeli public right now says that Netanyahu is screwing up big time. And you have to remember also that in Israel, because we keep on saying, right, Netanyahu's primary objective is to keep his own ass out of jail. Yeah. Yes. He has aligned with people that are even more militant, more violent, more right, more oppressive, more racist, more anything than he is. All of them are telling him, you make a hint of a concession to Hamas and we're leaving your government. Which means he's no longer the prime minister, which means he has a chance to go back to jail again. The people who are worse than he is are keeping him on a short leash and his primary concern is saving his own ass. And he doesn't care who gets hurt. Pretty much. So you got all these other considerations. It's like Even if you had the best student or activist protest against Israel, you would still have to convince the guy who's making the decisions that it's worth his own butt going to jail. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, but he doesn't seem to be really keen on that. Before October 7th happened, he was already being protested by the citizens of his own nation because he was trying to interfere with the courts. This is this is a man that's not loved. No, not at all. He's not loved by the Palestinians. He's not loved by Hamas, clearly. But he's not loved by his own people either. And he's not particularly loved by his own government because uh, members in his own government are saying, you better do what we say or else we'll make sure you fry. So um, that doesn't look like he's got uh, the respect and love of his own cabinet. This is not a good situation for anyone involved. There are no winners. There are no angels here. No. There are no angels here. Um, I was in Ottawa the last few days. Like I said, I, I passed by the encampment at the University of Ottawa. Uh, I have to say, there was nothing terrible going on. They're on the lawn of Tabaret Hall. There was tents. There were people sitting there. There were signs, but there was uh, no disruption. There was nobody uh, singing songs or uh, pitching slogans and all that kind of stuff. I did find one thing weird though. Like yesterday I was walking around 11 o'clock at night and I was there and they were turning around saying us last call for, which is like interesting that there would be like last call to buy, buy, buy beer around 10 30 on a protest. That's pro Palestinian considering that Muslims and beer don't really 
go to. <laughs> but hey, this is Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, but yeah, it all seems to be orderly. I guess if the University of Ottawa gave the 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 same provision that hey, listen. You know, we're, we're not particularly keen on this, but if you remain peaceful and you're not violent and you're not chanting anti-slogans and not impeding people's progress, um, I guess you're fine. Yeah. We wouldn't do this, but, and at least at the campus of University of Ottawa, that seems to be what there's done. There's no streets being blocked. There's no honking. There's no harassment. There was no, at least the couple of times over the last, you know, for uh, four or five, six days that have passed by, everything seemed to be relatively peaceful and in order. They're just occupying space on the lawn in front of Tabaret Hall. They're occupying the whole lawn, which kind of means pretty much nobody else can use it. But that's about it. That's what's going on. So um, can't really do anything about that. And uh, I was listening to a, a chat between Dean and Max Fawcett yesterday, and it's like, um, Max Fawcett made the very important point that, that this is the time in your life when you're a student, you go to university, you try things, you, 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 you study, you, you, you know, align with causes, you explore different groups, you explore different activities, you make mistakes. This is the time you like do this, it. you're young and you're idealistic and you take strong, strong, strong positions. I mean, you have to understand right here that, uh, the, the thing that people are going with is that genocide is being committed. If you truly believe that genocide is being committed, it's kind of hard to soft pedal your passion to stopping genocide. Yeah, yeah, we should really stop genocide, but first let's get some brunch and let me do my hair. Said no one ever. It's genocide. So it's like, if you believe genocide is happening and you didn't raise your passions to 10 or 11, They kind of go with the territory, mm -hmm. but this is the time where you're, yeah, you're passionate and you're inflamed and you, you take positions and you say, yes, I'm right. And he says, well, what about this? No, I'm idealistic. I'm young and passionate. I am right. This is wrong. And I will stay here. I will die on this hill. This is wrong. Then you get a little older and you realize all the subtleties and nuances and things are a little more difficult like this. But at that time of your life, that's when you're there. And creator be thanked for people that are passionate like that mm -hmm. because often they do end up moving things along just by sheer will of conviction i know that our fight for gay rights there's probably a lot of people in the movement saying at the time you know oh, that'll never work they'll never change you're wasting your time don't put yourself at risk of violence or being bashed or whatnot because then some of the kids said screw it we're doing it anyway Sometimes the kids are right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just sometimes takes a little right. bit, you know, takes a little bit of work to get there sometimes. Sometimes. All right. But I wanted to make it clear that I was bringing this particular story because, yes, we do like to talk about all sides of the aspect. Mm -hmm. And we do like to bring some real politic in it. And we do say things that disappoint the people that are more, the more passionate. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you more all in? Why are you poo pooing on this? We're not because we care about all of you and we all want all of you to not be ultimately disappointed. So we're the and, party poopers that bring in real reality. We're the party poopers that you, you'll turn around and go, oh, why do you always have to be right all the time? We're trying to be right. We're not trying to be right. Just, no, no. We're just saying there is logic, there is reasoning. And if you take a step back from the impassioned inflamed stuff, there are people, everybody has blind spots and there are mm -hmm. blind spots you may not be seeing. And I just don't want people to believe in principles, to go to the barricades, believing in principles that are not exactly so. Fair point. Because right? that's investing a lot of yourself in something that might end up having you run right into a brick wall and you go, ooh, that hurts. I would rather you not get hurt. I don't want to curb your passion. We don't want to curb like this. But there are certain things that people believe that when they go into protests or they go into advocacy work, that sometimes they're not exactly true. And then when things don't pan out the way that they had hoped for, they say, oh, this is just further more proof that things are rigged or against them. And sometimes, no, it's just that, you know what, somebody misinformed you about what the law, the constitution or whatever else allows, and they set you up for disappointment. It happens. And I just don't want you to be disappointed. All right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir.